in medium difficulty gmat 650 level problem solving question from algebra quadratic equations if p is greater than 0 and x square minus 11x plus p equals 0 this quadratic equation has integer roots how many integer values can p take we have done a question similar to this a couple of questions earlier only that in that question we found out the number of values that the coefficient of x could take the approach is pretty much the same the concept required is also exactly the same the concept required is knowing how to compute the sum and product of the roots of a quadratic equation given the coefficients of the quadratic equation. For any quadratic equation of the form ax square plus bx plus c equals 0 for this generalized form of quadratic equation, the sum of its roots is equal to minus b by a and product of its roots equals c by a. In our example, a equals 1, the coefficient of x square is 1, b equals minus 11 and c equals p. So some of the roots, let's say the roots are alpha and beta. So alpha plus beta equals minus of minus 11 minus b divided by a. So this is equal to 11. Product of the roots alpha beta is equal to c. c in this case is p divided by a equals 1 which is equal to p. We are trying to find out the number of values that p can take with the information that the sum of these two numbers alpha plus beta equals 11. So we can list down different values that alpha and beta can take such that its sum is equal to 11, we can compute the number of values that the product alpha beta can take. Right? Quickly recap these two steps. The sum of the roots equals minus b by a which equals 11. Product of the roots is equal to p which is c by a. Let's find out what kind of numbers can alpha and beta be. Let's do the deduction in three steps. The first one, the question says p is greater than 0. In the last slide, we found out that the product of the roots alpha beta equals p. So it essentially means that the product of the roots of this quadratic equation are positive numbers and they are actually positive integers because it says it's got integer roots. Next question is when will the product of two numbers be positive? The product of two numbers will be positive in two instances either when both the numbers are positive alpha is positive beta is also positive or when both the numbers are negative. Recall what we've computed as a value for the sum of these two numbers alpha plus beta which is the sum of the roots equals 11 sum of two numbers is positive that is not possible when both the numbers are negative sum of two numbers will always be negative so if the sum is equal to 11 then this possibility of both these numbers being negative is ruled out so we can deduce that alpha and beta are integers and they are positive numbers so essentially we need to find out different values that alpha and beta can take both of which are positive integers which add up to 11. let's do that in this step and compute the answer First one, let alpha be equal to 1 and beta be equal to 10. So alpha plus beta equals 11. We need to compute the value of p. We know that p is nothing but the product of the roots alpha beta. So if alpha is 1 and beta is 10, alpha beta is equal to 10. The second possibility is 2 and 9, sum continues to be 11, product is equal to 18. Third one is 3 and 7, 3 and 8, I'm sorry. So sum is equal to 11, product is equal to 24. Next one is 4 and 7, 4 and 7, sum is 11, product is equal to 28. 5 and 6 is the fifth possibility. Sum continues to be 11 and the product is equal to 30. 6 and 5, the product will be a 30. So we don't need to go any further. So how many different values can P take? P can take 5 different values. Here are those 5 values and these are the listings. Choice C is the correct answer to the question. Should take you about 45 seconds to a minute to get to this answer. Before you leave, I want you to do 3 things. 1. Sign up as a trial user at wzko.in slash core. Get started with statistics and average. Build momentum to your quant preparation, online GMAT quant preparation. And then pay up and unlock the remaining topics and get access to them. Two other things you can do. One, subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash visaco. And lastly, you can join as a member of this channel, which is different from subscribing to this channel. For a small monthly fee, you get certain member-only perks, which will be very useful for anyone preparing for the GMAT. Click on the join button given in the channel homepage or beneath any of these videos and check out what those perks are. It will be quite useful to give a boost to your GMAT preparation. Best wishes.